Hi everyone, it's the Ticket to Christ. Thank you for tuning back in. We are still uh, talking about the importance of growing in patience, right? And um, it's uh, especially it should be an especial special focus in the life of a Christian today because of the the context of society that we are surrounded by, um, meaning that everything around us is geared toward not having you have to wait for anything. You know, if you have to wait for something, people start becoming impatient. What's taking so long? You know, uh, it's instant te everything because of technology. Um, and people have, um, a a as creation or some kind of a solution for every single need, at least um, here in the United States. So, um, I think that a lot of times, because of the, you know the century that we're in, the the year that we're in, the period of time that we're in, whereby everything is so instantaneous and everything is so available and there is so much abundance, it can develop in people impatience when they have to wait. It can develop in people a lack of um, that fruit because. Um, they're operating, you're operating a culture in a time whereby everybody around you um, isn't patient. They're not trying to be patient and they're not walking out of patience, right? As soon as there's a challenge, a hardship or a difficulty, people start reaching for the wine bottle, for some drugs, for some pills, for some medication, or they quit or fall into depression, they give up. Uh, they're, they, so they don't develop, they don't mature, they don't develop or they fly off the handle in a temper. They don't take the time out to discipline, to develop discipline and to develop this fruit of the spirit. And so it's important that uh, we pay special attention to it, especially as we're going into the holiday season, whereby you're going to need some patience, right? And in Revelation 1 verse 9, we see the first century Christians, they had to be patient through tribulation. This is the apostle John. He says, I, John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so um, the apostle John was um, banished to this isle called Patmos because of the gospel of Christ, because he, you know, John, of course, was powerful in Jesus, preaching the gospel, sharing his faith, um, uh, helping the saints, and just bringing forth the word. He was very effective. And so they tried to do all sorts of things. Um, there's a historical account that they even tried to burn him in oil, but he, you know, nothing happened to him. Uh, the Lord, of course, would protect him. And here he is, an old man, having gone through a lot of tribulation, having persevered in the faith, in Lord, in the Lord, seeing all of the other apostles probably uh, martyred because all the other apostles were martyred except for John. And so that would have been very painful to see like Peter, to see all the other apostles um, beheaded or however they did it um, for uh, the gospel. Um, but they stood firm. You know, and this was a period of great tribulation, tremendous challenge for the church, the persecution that would come. They had to really walk by faith. They had to really stand firm and bear up, right? That's why it's called the persevere, the patience of Christ, right? It's to bear up under the challenges, to bear up under the, the difficulty, the opposition that you're going to face from people. And, um, so they're, they have a, an incredible prize waiting for them. You know, they're going to reign and rule with Jesus Christ when he comes back for that thousand years. Um, that's what I'm seeing here and receive a great reward. There are many people here, they don't want to go through anything, but they want the same reward as, say, John here. They, they want the same reward as the first century Christians who were thrown to lions and burnt. Um, but they don't want to have to go through anything for any length of time. They don't want to have hard conversations. They'll hang up the phone in your ear. Um, they'll, you know, avoid you, not not respond to you, not call you back, you know, not not deal, right? But, you know, we want that reward. But it doesn't happen that way. You're going to have to 
um, remain in Christ and bear much fruit to the glory of the Father because it's the fruit, right, that um, shows if you're a true disciple or not. That's what Jesus said. It's by your fruit you will be known. And so um, there is going to be another great tribulation period based on the book of Revelation in end times. Many people think that we're in end times now, and I'm inclined to believe it because um, it, Jesus talks about in Revelation 1, verse 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. So that implies that Israel would exist when he comes back. And we see Israel exist, started to exist again in the year 1948. Before that, there wasn't a nation of Israel, right? Which is where Jesus was pierced, which is where he was crucified. And so now you know that he, uh, there's going to be a nation of Israel existing when Jesus returns. And, um, and so we know that we're in these end of days. Uh, the Bible talks about in the end of days, there will be great tribu tribulation. And it will be so challenging that God is going to cut short that day for the elect's sake, which is the, uh, disciples, the saints, saints who are alive, whether it be us or others, because of the, um, for their sake, he's going to shorten that time. Um, but if you don't have the fruit of the spirit of patience, you know, dwelling in you, you will fall away like some of these people did that Paul had to warn in the book of Hebrews when they were suffering such persecution, they started to turn back. Uh, to Ju Judaism, turn away from Jesus. And Paul had to caution them, no, everything we have is found in Christ alone. You don't need anything else. We All of those things are useless. You know, you don't have to be circumcised. You don't have to follow feast days. You don't have to do all of those things. All of these things are found in Christ. Christ fulfills all of the seven feasts of the Lord. Um, Christ, um, the in Christ, we have all that we need. Um, and so, you know, uh, developing patience uh, with whatever it is you're going through. It might not be a big thing like with David. Yesterday we saw David. God gave him the promise of the kingship, but he didn't receive that promise immediately. Um, it took years, but during that time, God built his character because God was building a king. And then when he finally came into the promise, he was able to be a really uh, great king and um, uh, so much so God said uh, that the Messiah, Jesus, would come to, from his lineage, right? And so, um, you know, so that's was a big thing. Abraham was another big one, you know, the promise of Isaac, and it took a long time for Isaac to be born. Um, but there are also small things whereby we can have patience in, and as, as I mentioned, in our conversations with people, for them to see that patience in our um, attitude toward God as we wait for things, as we wait to see prayers that we've prayed um, unfold or happen, um, and patience with others who might not get it like we get it, quote unquote, um, having patience and compassion and mercy on them and in our dealings with others as well. Having a, a mindset set on being patient and being merciful and being compassionate, even as our Father in heaven has those qualities, right? Um, so, uh, that is it from me on this. Um, just really the takeaway is, um, if we're the end time saints, then there's going to be great tribulation here on earth and we need to have patience and, um, be resilient so that we can have good witness and testimony before God. We don't want our hearts to get hard because of the increase of wickedness around us. We don't want our love to wax cold. We don't want... Um, that we want to be influenced by the Holy Spirit for the love of God to pour through us and to shine through us brightly like a bright light in darkness. Um, beloved, that is it from me today. Hope you're doing well. Take care.